so you guys to say quality management perspective. Quality management perspective. Uh, Edward Hasso ID, Yakosa, Linda Dustin, Debbie Niger, Noel, and Edward.
No point. Yeah, for her sake. So what is for her sake? You have never heard of this point. You are kind of uh, making assumptions eh? from the speech. Like, um, where is that for us? So they tell us how the weather is going to be like, like today. Um, yeah, so it is a planning to use to predict future information happening that will influence the operations of an organization. So, even in an organization, we need to make a focus. We need to predict, you look in the future. That uh, then you can make decisions. So it is the planning tool used to predict future information happening that will influence the operation of an organization. So forecasting is uh, is a systematic attempt to uh, so forecasting is a systematic attempt made to look. Uh, Yeah, so forecasting uh, looks at the past and present situation factors affecting the weighting of the organization. So it looks at the past and also um, the present situation factors that can affect the weighting of the organization. Uh, so when you are planning, you also you make uh, focus. Okay? So planning and focus are closely related to each other. So planning is deciding in advance what is to be done in the future. And um, the future is uncertain, eh? We don't know about what will happen in the future. Um, so managers are forced to make certain assumptions regarding the future. So this is forecasting. So there are essential elements in business forecasting. Um, so four essential elements were identified uh, for business forecasting. The first one is developing a groundwork with the known and available information about the company's growth, its positioning, product line. Yeah. So it is the first stage of investigating the forecasting. So first of all, you need to develop a groundwork for the known and available information. So you, uh, you develop a groundwork for the information that you have. In, the, uh, in your organization. And then, against the backdrop of information collected, an estimate of future business prospects is made by the manager. So after you have the, the groundwork of how your organization uh, is at the moment, now you can have um, an estimate of the future business prospects. Um, so that is made by the manager. And after that, you compare the actual with the estimated results. Um, yeah, you compare the actual and the estimated results. And lastly, the last element is refining the focus process. So as the time progresses, managers should be able to adjust the focus in the need to meet the changing needs of the business. And then we have techniques of forecasting. There are three techniques, the deterministic, the symptomatic, and systematic techniques. So the first one, the deterministic technique, assumes that there is a close casual connection between the present and the future. So there is a connection between the present and the, there is a casual connection between the present and the future. So these techniques are used to forecast the certain elements such as capital spending, consumer expenditure, and the general business um, condition. So the first four techniques used here are latest information, knowledge of programs or limits, spotting the beginning of lengthy process, and recognizing uh, people's expectations. And then this. Uh, 
symptomatic techniques, these are based on the point of information supported through economic activities in the country. So sometimes we make assumptions uh, from the economic activities that are happening in the country uh, and the nation. Uh, so based on the significant changes in the business activity over the period of time and based on information collected, future trends are predicted. And then, uh, and lastly, we have systematic. So systematic approach uh, in forecasting is derived from the economic theory. So the cause and effect relationship uh, among different economic factors, which was relevant for past, present, and future, are determined and focused are then constructed. So here they depend on the economic theory. So the people that are doing economics can understand this better because they already have theories. If this happens, this is what is going to happen. So they already have theories that are there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or systematic approach. I'm saying uh, they the focus thing is derived from the economic theory. So there are already theories that are there. Okay. So you make assumptions according to the theories. So the theories uh, that are there in the box, the already theories would be if Maybe impression is like this, this is what is going to happen. Right? So they like the assumptions from reading the books, the looking the theories, the economic theories that are already there. Yeah, so now we look at decision making. What is decision making? Sometimes 
Um, so part of the decision decision making can be made, but part part of it depends upon personal characteristics of uh, the decision making. Dynamic process. Uh, so decision making is a process by which individuals select a course of action among several alternatives to produce a desired result. For example, a manager may hire people based on maybe make right and um, and also pick up uh, candidates recommended by an influential party at times. So depending on the situation requirement, managers take suitable decisions using discretion or judgment. So we are saying decision making is a dynamic process. It can change. It changes. So there's an example of a manager who hire people based on merit, merit, but at times you or she can hire people by uh, getting recommendations from other people. So it means that the process of uh, hiring people has changed. Eh? Um, it's a perverted function. So uh, what we mean is that decision making uh, requires, um, sorry, decision making. Yeah. So what it means is that decision making is. Um, can happen at upper management, up, upper management level, or middle management level, even at lower management <coughs> level. So like everywhere in the organization, there's decision making. We can't say that only the upper managers, they are the ones that make decisions. But everywhere in, uh, in the organization, there's decision making. And um, it is a continuous activity. So you cannot say after you make a decision today, but you are done, you are not going to make a decision again. Because that decision that you make, it is going to meet uh, changes in the environment. So you have to go back and make more decisions. So decision making commit, um, needs commitment of time, effort and money. Uh, decision making um, is a human and social process involving intellectual abilities, intuition, and judgment. And uh, it is an integral part of planning. So you cannot, you cannot plan without making decisions. <coughs> so there are different types of decisions. We have basic and routine decisions. And then there is uh, personal and organizational decisions. Basic and um, basic and routine uh, decisions. So basic decisions are unique one-time decisions demanding demanding large investment, creative creativeness, and good judgment on the part of the manager. So these are one-time and they are unique. For example, uh, a launch of a uh, new product. So these are like one one time decisions. Because it's not like every day that organization companies launch a new product. It's a one time um, thing, and also it um, it involves uh, the company spending a lot of money, right? So. So these are strategic decisions which affect the future of the organization. Yeah. So we have the basic decisions and then we have routine decisions. Routine decisions are liquidity in nature. So these are, are decisions that you do almost every day. They require little deliberation and generally concern the short-term commitment. So they... The basic decisions are most remain by the upper management, while the routine decisions are most remain here on the lower 
management. And then we have personal and organization decisions. So personal decisions, um, they are decisions that a manager do uh, that do not have any effect on the organization. Um, and then we have organization decisions. These are made by manager in official or formal in his official or formal capacity. So they are aimed at furthering the interest of the organization. Uh, there is a personal decision and organization decision. So personal decisions, these are made, uh, they, these are the decisions that a uh, manager makes for man they do not have any, they do not protect the organization. While the organization decisions are made by managers in their official or formal capacity. So for personal decisions, a manager makes a decision but no one can question him. Okay? Because uh, there's an example, decision to watch TV, to study. So a manager can decide to enroll himself to a school. That is not an organization decision. That is his personal decision.
Yeah, so planning can also be defined as the process by which managers establish goals and uh, specify how these goals are to be attained. So it is concerned with both ends and also means. So it is the process by which uh, managers establish goals and specify how these goals are to be attained. So it is concerned with ends <coughs> and means. What do we mean by this? The planning uh, is concerned with ends and means.
construction. So it is concerned with both ends and means, planning therefore has two components, establishment of goals and means of goal attainment. The, so planning has those two components. So establishing goals and um, and establishing the means for goal attainment. So in the planning of an organization activity, managers need to think what has to be done, who is going to do it, and how and when they will do it. So they look at um, what has to be done, who is going to do uh, those things, and how and when they will do it. So in this case, managers analyze the past and future of the business, for the fullest exploration of business opportunities and threats, to take action uh, in to take an action as step ahead, matching the organization resources and capabilities. What is the market of this? Managers must adopt specific characteristics and guidelines. 
So, uh, the four will describe this characteristic um, criteria. So, goals must be specific and measured. We know uh, about goals being smart. Okay? We have heard about this. In terms of the goals being smart, no? <laughs> Yeah. 
So let's send the way extra hard so that they can also pay for it. So why should managers plan? Planning provides selection to managers and then managers are right. So it provides selection to managers and then managers are right. Uh, it helps employees to know where the organization is going. So when they, your subordinates have a plan, they will know what to do. Because they know uh, where the organization is going. Uh, planning offsets and reduces uncertainty and change. Planning offsets and reduces uncertainty and change. As we say uh, that planning um, involves uh, forecasting. Okay? So you forecast, you make um, uh, an uh, information analysis and you make a forecast. So you already know what is in front of you. So there will not be any uh, uncertainty. Or if you are going to meet uncertainties, uh, they will be very few.
So planning facilitates control by establishing standards. So you establish standards. So through controlling one will compare the actual performances against the cause. So for the sales people, they can actually check in the month of uh, July, how much did we sell? Okay? So if maybe they sold 50 products and they were supposed to, uh, to sell 100 products, they will go back to check why, why did this happen? What went from eh? Before we get up, they should reach up to the same and then they start changing. So it's really to attack it. So they have uh, control. Uh, yeah, so through control, one will compare actual performances against both, identify significant deviations, and take any necessary collection um, action. Collective action. Thank <laughs> you. 